I mentioned at the start of this session, you know, the, the fact or um, the point that if you have a strategy for trigonometry questions, you can't really go far wrong. Okay? So, this will always, always, always be your strategy. What you're going to be asked to find is, you're going to be asked to find either a side in a triangle, an angle in a triangle, or the area of a triangle. So that's what the questions will generally revolve around. So find the side, find an angle, or find the area of a triangle. Now, so you must be given a triangle. And if you see a triangle and you're asked to find a side or an angle, you're looking at, this is a trigonometry question. Now, there are basically four areas that can help you. The four areas that can help you are Pythagoras. We can use Pythagoras if we have a right angle triangle, we're given two sides, and we want to find a third side. That's generally when we use Pythagoras. There's a formula for it, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, so we write it down. If you can't use Pythagoras, you go with the sin cos tan. Sin cos tan, your trigonometric functions. That's so katoa. A sakatoa, sin cos tan, they allow us to find sides or angles in right angle triangles. Now, always write down your sakatoa, sin equals, cos equals, tan equals. Now, you can only use Pythagoras and sin cos tan if you have right angle triangles. If you've got a non right angle triangle, in order to find sides or angles in those non right angle triangles, we need different rules. And the rules that we have are sine rule and cosine rule. Now again, they're on page 16 of your log tables, so you need to be aware of them, you need to know them, you don't have to learn them off, but you definitely need to be aware of them. Now, in terms of sine rule and cosine rule, and when do we use them, or why do we use them? Sine rule you will use if you have a pair. Now what I mean by a pair is, is that we should have an idea of our properties of triangles at this stage. And in our properties of triangles, if that there is angle A, and that there is side A, well, that there is a pair. So we've got a side and its opposite angle. And if you have that, you can use sine rule. And you'll see it when we actually go through exam questions. Likewise, if that there is angle B and we have sine B, or side B, I should say, well, then again, that is a pair. And then obviously here, if we have angle C and this is side C, so as long as you have an angle and its opposite side, or a side and its opposite angle, then you can go and use sine rule. So A over sin A equals B over sin B equals C over sin C, and that is the formula. I tend to write it as side divided by sine of corresponding angle equals side divided by sine of corresponding angle. And with trigonometry, you know, think of the examiner, trig, tree, troy, he gives you three pieces of information, and we're using that three pieces of information to, use, to find a fourth piece of information. That's what we tend to do within the actual questions. Now, what happens if you don't have a pair? So what happens if you don't have angle A and side A, or angle B and side B, and so on? Well, then we use cosine rule. So we use sine rule when we have a pair, and we use cosine rule when we don't have a pair. And for me, that is the easiest way to approach every trigonometry question. And you'll see that when we go through the questions, I'll be like, can we use Pythagoras? Can we use sin cos tan? Can we use sine rule? Can we use cosine rule? That is the steps, that is the approach that we'll always use with trigonometry questions, okay? So use that, one, Pythagoras, two, sin cos tan, or Sokotoa, three, sine rule, and then four, cosine rule. And if it doesn't revolve around that, it tends to be the area of a sector, which is fine, or it tends to be the area of a triangle, which is fine. And again, they're just based on formula, okay? So that's what we need to remember at all times. With that in mind, let's open up a page 87. And on page 87, we are going to have a look at this question 59. Okay, so question 59. All right, now question 59 says, find the distance x in the diagram below, which is not the scale, and give your answer correct to two decimal places. So what I'll do is I'll just draw it. Right? So, so we're given this triangle. We're told that this is x. We're told that this is 10. We're told that this is 63. And we're told that this is 65. Okay, 63, 65. Right, so the examiner says, Find x. So we want to find that angle there, x. Okay? Right. Let's go through our strategy. What did we say? Pythagoras, sin cos tan, sine rule, cosine rule. Now, you can clearly see that this is not a right angle triangle. And if it's not a right angle triangle, we can't use Pythagoras or we can't use sin cos tan. So that's gone. And then ask yourself, could we use sine rule? Now, when do we use sine rule? We use sine rule when we have a pair. Do we have a pair? Well, we do because you can clearly see we have that side and we have that angle. That there is our pair. Right? So what we can then say is side divided by sine of corresponding angle 
equals side, which is what we're looking for, divided by the sine of the corresponding angle. So we need to find this angle here before we can use sine rule. But we know in our properties of triangles, that our three angles in a triangle will always add up to, will always add up to 180 degrees. So that there is, one, that there is 180 minus 63 plus 65, so that has to be 52. So side, 10, divided by sine of corresponding angle, sin 63, equals side, x, divided by sine of corresponding angle, sin 52. And that's it. And the rest is literally just using your calculator. What's that sin 52 doing there? It's dividing, send it over there and be multiplying. So x equals 10 multiplied by sin 52 divided by sin 63. And we put that into our calculator and the examiner says correct the two decimal places. So x equals 8.84 centimeters. Please, I mentioned it before. So units, measurements, really important. If you don't put it in, you're gonna lose marks. Okay? So make sure, and by the way, Go to your log tables, and from your log tables, actually write in sign rule. Right, so on page 16, so go and write it in, because that tends to be any work of merit, which tends to give us marks. Okay, so please, 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 don't forget to do that. Right, so that's part A. Now, part B. Okay, so part B says, find the distance y in the diagram below, not the scale, give your answer correct to two decimal places. Now again, what I'll do is, I'll go and draw it. Right, so, so we're given something like that, a triangle like that, that's y. This here is 10.2 centimeters, this here is 8.5 centimeters, and then this here is 53.8. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go through our strategy. So ask yourselves, could we use Pythagoras or sin cosan? Now again, this is not a right angle triangle, right? So if it's not a right angle triangle, we can't use Pythagoras or sin cosan. So after Pythagoras and sin cos tan, we asked ourselves, can we use sine rule? Now, as we said already, to use sine rule, we need to have a pair. So in this question here, we clearly had a pair. We had that side and that angle. Now, do we have a pair in this question? Well, we have that side, but we don't know that angle. And we have that side, but we don't have that angle. And we don't know what that side is, but we have that angle. So we clearly don't have a pair. And if we don't have a pair, we can't use sine rule. And if we can't use sine rule, where do we go to next? We go to cosine rule. So when we go to cosine rule, the first thing you'll do is, is you go to your log tables and you write down the formula. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. All right, so write that down. And then all we've got to do is recognize our a or b and our c. Now if you remember from the properties of triangles that we had earlier on, like I said to you, if that is angle a, that's side a. And if that is angle b, that's side b. <coughs> and if that is angle c, that's side c. So... Our A and our A correspond, or B and our B correspond, and our C and our C correspond. So what we're looking for is, is we're looking to find this Y, which is in fact A. And then that must mean that the angle opposite A, or Y, is this 53.8. The B and the C then are our two other sides. Okay, so that's what we're going to work off. So we're looking to find A, and I'll just call it Y, because that's what it is within the actual triangle. So Y squared equals... Well, B is either 10.2 or 8.5. You know, you could use the, uh, either of them, but it will take it as 10.2, so 10.2 squared, plus C then is 8.5. So just to be clear, if we take B as 10.2, then C is 8.5, and if we take B as 8.5, well, then C is 10.2. Like, you, you can reverse them. It doesn't make a difference. Minus 2 by B, which we said is 10.2, by C, which you said is 8.5. By cos A, and what's cos of the angle? Well, the angle is 53.8 degrees. Now, ultimately, all you're actually doing there is just putting that into your calculator. So you go and put that into your calculator. And remember, if you put this into your calculator here, you're getting Y squared. And we don't want Y squared. What do we want? We want Y. So we'd have to go and get the square root of that in order to get y. And that works out as y equals 8.60 centimeters. Okay? So the strategy definitely works. So when you're in the exam in June, on the 8th of June, I want you going through that strategy. You know, recognize it's trig, you got a triangle, Pythagoras, sin, cos, tan, sine rule, cosine rule. Okay? Lovely.